I'm David, and this is a short presentation about the Jagged Globe expedition to Spantic. The images I'm going to show here, taken by myself uh, this year, 2023, are already on the Jagged Globe website, but I think by talking through them here, I can perhaps give a bit more information. Spantic is the most straightforward of the 7,000 meter peaks in Pakistan. I have led five expeditions over the last 15, 20 years, and Jagged Globe have had several other trips led by other leaders and guides. This shot gives uh, a, a good overview showing the approach trek along the Chogalungma Glacier. We walk for three days along here to get to the base camp, which is just out of sight at the bottom of this ridge. Camp one is at the end of the rocky ridge, beginning of the snow line. Camp two, a uh, bit of a horizontal traverse, some, some up and down. Camp three is located up here. And then summit day is a long hike across the plateau. And then not this ridge, uh, but one a bit round to the side is ascended. This year's team included five climbers and two guides from the UK. One of the most attractive things about the Spantic expedition is that the walk to base camp is interesting and travels through quite varied terrain. Unlike uh, many walk-ins in the Karakoram, which can involve a lot of uh, stones and rubble, most of the walk to Spantic base camp from Arandu al along the Chogalungma glacier is through quite green and vegetated terrain. This is shot just leaving the village and uh, later on, on the first day, looking back, the, the village is, is down here. The first two days of the walk go along the side of the glacier through uh, quite green terrain with quite a few flowers. It, it's not always easy along the Ablation Valley. At some points, it's necessary to go down onto slightly more difficult terrain. But walking roughly four, five, six hours a day for three days takes us here all the time. You can see the summit of the peak and base camp located just down here at the foot of that ridge. This is shot from the end of day two of the walk-in, giving a, quite a, an accurate picture of the nature of the climb. Base camp located just out of shot down here. Uh, the climb to camp one comes up this ridge mostly rocky, although early season can be some snow. Camp one located here, uh, 4,360 metres. Then the route to camp two, it looks relatively level, but uh, the ridge undulates and there is a, a fair bit of height gain to the location of camp two here, which is just over 5,000 metres. And then a climb of just over 1,000 metres to get to the site of Camp 3, which is just the other side of this uh, snow, snow hummock here. The steepest section of the route goes up the snow here and then traverses behind this hummock to a camp spot about here. So the first half of summit day, the terrain is fairly level coming across here and then uh, just uh, round the corner a bit, ascends a ridge roughly similar in, uh, in angle to, to this one here. Another good thing about the trip is the base camp is not on a glacier. Several Karakoram expeditions, the base camp is on loose stones and ice because uh, that's the only place available, but it can be quite uncomfortable. The good thing about the Spantic base camp is it's a bit raised up above the glacier on these uh, platforms cut out from the hillside. And it's just much easier to walk around in, in sandals or light footwear with, without any obvious hazards, which wouldn't be the case if you were camped down on a glacier. So a uh, base camp height, 4,300 metres. In base camp, obviously, we've got a mixture of supplies. Uh, the majority brought, bought locally, some shipped in from the UK and uh, dining tent, tables, chairs, connected to the kitchen tent. Normally we plan fairly early starts, this uh, just after dawn, climbing from camp 
bit base camp to camp one. Uh, lower down, we do the early start to avoid the heat of the sun during the day. <clears throat> and higher up, we do the early start to get the snow while it's still frozen. Because of possible rockfall issues on the section between base camp and camp one, it's normal to wear climbing helmets for this section. Uh, there is a path, uh, a, li a little faint, uh, takes a little bit of attention to find it. But as the trip goes on, more people use it. It, it gets a little more worn in. Uh, on this particular day, we're looking at a little bit of light rain. People are wearing waterproofs. Roughly the first half of the hike from base camp to camp one will be on this stony ground, <clears throat> uh, weaving between some bushes and onto some stones. Uh, quite a narrow path, scree, not dissimilar to kind of hill walking terrain you'd get uh, on some of the North Wales peaks or, or the Lake District. Good views of the surrounding mountains all around. And then the upper section of the route to Camp 1, we start getting this really good view down the Chogalunga Glacier, the route that we've used for the walk-in, and we get onto more snowy ground. And just the final section, 30, 40 minutes before we get into Camp 1, there are some uh, small rock pinnacles to cross, which give a uh, good opportunity for photographs looking down. This is the site of Camp 1, as I said a moment ago, 5,100 metres. Space for eight, nine, ten tents. Uh, at this stage, we, we're the only group there. And then uh, moving up to Camp 2, early start to avoid soft snow, uh, mostly following the ridge, no real objective dangers. Uh, but a reasonable bit of up, maybe go up 50 metres, down 50 metres, then up 100 metres, down 100 metres, as we follow the undulating ridge for a few kilometres to the site of Camp 2 at uh, 5,680 metres. We use these fairly large tents, three-person tents, uh, with, with two people sleeping in each, so we've got plenty of space. A couple of interesting things to note in this shot as we move away from Camp 2 up to Camp 3. Uh, our local staff team have placed a thousand metres of fixed rope the day before. These quite deep tracks in the snow were made by them coming back. But because we're starting quite early in the morning, if you look at the feet of the people in front, we're walking across a fairly hard frozen surface. And that's what we'd be aiming to do most days. And as the sun comes up, we can see the, the whole route we followed stretched out behind. A little higher up, we're now onto the fixed ropes. You can see a couple of tents still behind at Camp 2. Uh, the angle 30, 35 degrees. And uh, the condition of the snow can change quite a lot. Uh, when it's frozen, it's quite firm. Obviously, soft snow is hard going. And uh, later in the season or after a period of good weather, the uh, surface snow melts away and it can be a bit icy underneath. And that's when the, the ropes come in helpful for the, for the descent. The route between Camp 2 and Camp 3 I'd say the first two thirds is the steepest section, 30, 35 degrees. Again, we can just make out these two tents down at, uh, at Camp 2. And, uh, and then after pulling up the fixed rope, six, 700 metres worth, uh, we get to a, a small platform, a shelf, where it's possible to have a rest. Things level out and the section from here on up is not so steep. So this, uh, a really good view looking out over the, the peaks of the Karakoram to the east. Then we get to the site of Camp 3, just under 6,300 metres, a nice level site. And again, we're using big tents for two people, so fairly comfortable to stay. Uh, we do try and move in the morning while it's cold because uh, at these altitudes in the Karakoram at the height of the summer, it does get quite warm in the afternoons. 
So we, we try and get here mid morning so people can shelter in the tents from, from the heat of the day. And the obvious peak here showing uh, 7,400 meters is Haramosh. We start summit day about midnight. I don't have any photographs for the, the first section. This is now about 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning. We've done the long traverse across the plateau and then done a right turn and we're heading up the final slopes to the summit. And this is the point when we start seeing on the other side of the mountain. This is looking down to the Hunza Valley. Karimabad is just down here and the Karakorm Highway running towards the Chinese border, just off shot to the right, is running across here. And this is the Barpu Glacier here. Uh, and this, just uh, an aside, this point we can see here is Rush Peak, which uh, is another mountain I climbed later on in the season last year. But uh, turning back to the summit of Spantic, we, we've come across the plateau and then turned up the slightly steeper ground, uh, all walking on snow, but weaving between some rocks. And then uh, took us longer than normal. Uh, I'd say a normal summit day is eight to nine hours. Soft snow and a couple of other issues slowed us down. It took 10 hours. After a midnight start, we got there at 10 a.m. So a, a picture of some of the team on the top. And then Another picture, uh, one person looking down, but this gives a slightly better view of the, the, the background view you're getting. Back down in base camp, local staff, pleased to see us, uh, gave everybody one of these celebratory necklaces. And then we got a picture of the whole team, the five climbers, two guides, and a total of 10 local staff, six high altitude climber porters, who'd done the work for us above base camp, a cook, two assistants, and uh, and Ali, who was the, the local guide organizing all the logistics. This area is known for crystals and rock formations. So while we'd been on the mountain, the staff had been collecting uh, crystals close to base camp and built this uh, small rock garden for us. Then leaving, leaving base camp for the walk back to Arandu village, we got this sunset view looking back over the, the whole route. This one showing the, the location of base camp right down by the edge of the glacier and uh, the route really quite, uh, quite obvious on the, on the rock as far as camp one. The, the traverse uh, heading away from camera here, so a bit foreshortened to camp two, the climb up to camp three just there, and uh, good views of the summit. So these are pictures taken during last summer's trip, and uh, we're hoping to run the, the expedition in, in a fairly similar format for 2024. I, I will be leading it again, and uh, we're hoping for a sizable team to, to enable us to run it again. These are the dates, and uh, the full written itinerary and, and all the details are on the Jagged Globe website. Anyone wanting further information is welcome to contact the office. Uh, hopefully, the staff there can answer all your questions. But if not, they'll put you in touch with myself and uh, and I can tell you what I know about the mountain from my my five previous expeditions there. So that is uh, an introduction to the Spantic 2024 expedition. Thanks for watching.